Yo, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it is your boy Zether here, back at it again to drop yet another What If Movie Special, this being a My Hero Academia X One Piece What If. Now, I am not going to lie to you guys at all, I am not the world's greatest One Piece fan, if anything, I probably made it to that arc where they were like inside of the whale's belly, I didn't even make it to the grand line I believe, in terms of the anime, however... I saw that this was uh, one of the one of the powerful, you know, um, what's it called? One of the powerful devil fruits. And I was just like, bro, I have to do it. For those of you who don't know what the luck luck fruit is, and for those of you who prefer the, uh, I believe it's the Japanese version of this. It's basically the Rocky Rocky no Me. And what it does is, well, it basically gives people extreme luck. It allows someone to steal another person's luck by touching them and making the user extremely lucky. It also allows them to give people luck and and also just touch people without you know doing nothing. It's not like it's always active, so Deku will have the ability to turn it off and on after he trains with it for a little bit. In case some of you guys probably don't even remember this devil fruit, it's probably because this is one of the mo one of the uh, it's one of the devil fruits that was introduced and it's not even canon. It was in one of the movies, I believe, and it belongs to uh, Barakat ba Baccarat, I, I believe. Baccarat? I don't I don't know if I'm even saying the name right. I probably butchered that. But that being said, you guys basically get the gist. It's a fruit makes people lucky. Deck was going to have it. Me, I like broken characters and this has to be one of the absolutely most one of the most absolute broken devil fruits I've ever heard of. So, we are definitely going to have to be giving this a little bit of a spin. That being said, though, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And with that being said, you guys are about to witness an amazing intro. So um, hit it. Okay, so we started our story off on the day that Deku was born. Now, many of you guys are probably expecting me to change Deku's hair color or do anything at all in general just to Deku because in my what-ifs, I usually like to change Deku up a little bit. However, in this version of events, there will literally be no changes in terms of the story until Deku is about at the age of, mm, let me think about it. This video wasn't scripted, so I don't know what direction I want to take the video in. So I'm just going to say that he's going to basically be 12 years old, all right? Everything in the story that happened previously is basically going to stay as it would in canon. And this is when we will now pick off our story. Okay, so I'm going to say that Deku was basically going to be at home one day, just kind of chilling as his mom is out getting some groceries. At this point, Hisashi would, of course, be out of Japan doing some, you know, his, his job and all that stuff. Deku would basically be home alone. He'd just be chilling watching just some good old spongebob you know some good old-fashioned spongebob and this is when inko would walk into the door she puts her keys on the table and you can just hear that noise that all of us are far too familiar with you know when the keys slam down and you can just hear the i'm home yeah that basically happens deku would say hey mom as he's basically looking over the couch inko would look at deku as she would say oh hey zuku i got you something deku would look towards uh, her direction as she would say look i got you this little fruit one of the sellers in the market offered it for twenty dollars he said it was like a little bit of a good luck charm it just looked funny to me and i wanted to see if you would like it as deku would see this strange looking fruit deku would just be like yeah as inko would be like you don't like it deku would be like no no mom i do as inko would be like good because i'm about to make you some food and maybe you can have it for dessert deku would be like all right great as Inko would begin cooking up, you know, she would start she would start getting to work in the kitchen and Deku would just be waiting for his meal. This is when Deku would finally get his food and afterwards he would of course get to dessert. This is when now Deku would basically proceed to ask her what the story was. And she would begin to explain that, you know, there was just some weird ass guy in the market selling uh, selling um selling random things and that just so happened to be one of them and she would just be like yeah i was surprised he was selling nothing but antiques and stuff so it was kind of strange to see a little fruit lying around deku would be like huh that's true as it's at this point that deku would basically just be like well bottoms up as he would cut as he would try to cut the fruit but he would be like dude this is so hard deku at this point would just be like all right whatever as he would grab the entirety of the fruit and just chuck it down his throat inko would be like what are you doing izuku and deku would be like what as he basically eats it whole this is when deku would be like Ugh, and he would make like a face of pure disgust because every devil fruit has a bitter and awful taste to him after this deku would basically just be like Ugh, as he's just like he's like no this was not it and inko would just be like oh sweetie i'm so sorry you know like i didn't know it was gonna be like this deku would be like ah it's no problem mom as he would just say can i have some juice though because it's kind of not that great 
She would basically go over to get Deku the juice, however when she hands it to him, Deku would touch her hand. This is when Deku would basically take all of her luck, as it's at this point that Deku would hear a knock on the door, as it's at this point that Deku would basically just hear a knock and he would go check it out, as it's at this point that it would be a pizza man with a box that actually says you are the winner for free pizza, you know, saying that he's the millionth uh, person to order pizza. Deku, Deku's mom would be about to say, no, it wasn't us, it was the people over there, and Deku would just be like, yeah, thanks, as he would smile at the pizza man and he'd basically just, you know, just get the coupon for, you know, free pizza for a year. Inko would be like, that was strange, as she would start rubbing her head. However, right as she does that, she would basically close her eyes as she starts walking and a random banana peel would just be on the ground as she would slip and fall. Immediately, Deku would be like, mom, as he'd go check up on her and immediately Deku would just be like, wait, after I touched her, that happened and that seemed pretty unlucky. It's at this point that Deku would subconsciously just feel like something is off. As it's at this point that Deku would just be like, it's as if I got lucky. Deku would look at his mom as he's like, could the fruit have been real? It could be a luck luck fruit. As he would say, he would wake his mom up in about two minutes and he would say, mom, you got me the greatest gift ever. Inko would be like, what? And Deku would just be like, nothing as he would basically proceed to touch her again. And it's at this point that Inko's luck would go back to her. Deku would smile at her direction as he basically just goes off. And it's at this point that Inko would just be stuck there just like, what's going on? As Deku would just be grinning hard. She's like, that thing might have unlocked my quirk. As it's at this point that Deku would basically start realizing what abilities he has. Deku would basically proceed to smile as he would think that he can't wait to show it off at school. However, on the way to the bus, he would then start thinking, wait, wasn't I diagnosed quirkless? I mean, I know that late bloomers is a thing, but it doesn't feel like a quirk. I mean, not that I actually know what a quirk feels like. However, it just doesn't feel like a part of me, I guess you could say. It feels as if it was something that I was given. Deku would just contemplate this thought and it's at this point that a bunch of people would basically start surrounding Deku as immediately Bakugo would walk up to him and be on his usual patrol to basically annoy Deku. This is when Bakugo would basically look at Deku as Deku would just start touching a bunch of the people around him and he would take all of their luck. Immediately Bakugo would look at Deku but then turn towards another kid and start to mess with them as this is when Deku would just walk by and he would just grin as he would basically spend the entire day just getting completely lucky and every single person that he would touch would end up getting hurt in some sh some way shape or form so uh yeah Deku wasn't exactly stealing all their luck because if he was they would quite literally die from like how unlucky they would get so you know Deku's not some evil villain so you know it's not like he's gonna do people that wrong anyways that being said, this is when Deku would basically spend the entirety of the day getting so lucky that it would actually end up pissing Bakugo off. He would get pretty angry at Deku seeing at the seeing as Deku was just going through this entire day as if it just belonged to him. He just walked around school as if it was his or something. Bakugo would walk up to Deku as Deku would be closing his locker up. He would then be like, "Oh, hey Bakugo," as Bakugo would slam an explosion into his uh, into his locker. Deku would then have a grin on his face as he would look at Bakugo and tap him on the shoulder. This is when Deku would look at Bakugo as he's like, hey, how about we play a little wager for today? Bakugo would say, huh? What are you talking about, nerd? As it's at this point that Deku would just be like, how about we do a little bit of a coin flip? If I get heads, you leave me alone. If I get tails, I get to punch you. In the you get to punch me in the stomach as hard as you want. Bakugo would smile and say, <laughs> whatever, nerd. I have a 50% chance of beating you anyways. Deku would say, I'm not so sure about that. As he would flip the coin and it would land on heads. This one, Bakugo would just be standing there not saying a word. And Deku would go away as Bakugo just looks at him and says, you got lucky this time, nerd. As he would walk away pretty angrily. And this is when Deku would basically start walking away with a smirk on his face excited as ever excited as can be and it's at this point that Deku would realize something Deku has an incredible power luck probability manipulation everything will always be on his side lady luck is on his side there is nothing and nobody which will be able to stop him now and he may just very well be able to become the number one hero with this amazing ability that he has that that being said, this is when Deku would basically start training for the next couple of years. 
Deku during these next couple of years, which is basically from the age of, well, what I said earlier, which is basically 12 years old, up until the point of, well, the day of the Sludge Villain incident, Deku would start training his uh, Devil Fruit ability. This would lead to Deku basically learning how to control whether or not he takes gifts or just doesn't do anything with a person's luck. During this time, Deku would have also noticed he would have felt as if he had more power within him, as if there was more to the to the little ability that he had. And that, oh, Deku was definitely right. There's way more to be done with this this uh, amazing OP Devil Fruit. Deku could literally never lose a fight, hypothetically. He could just get so lucky that he just never ends up actually having to do a thing. I mean luck is a real thing and you know when you have it on your side you might as well never lose because you know just luck is luck that being said this is when Deku would basically proceed to kind of just start uh, growing in terms of popularity in a scholastic uh, areas, I guess you could say. See, people around Deku, after seeing that Deku was so lucky, would honestly just start liking him more. And people would start staying around him, even, th even though they believe that he's quirkless, which technically speaking, he still is. However, he does have a devil fruit ability, which is way better than having a quirk. So, a lot of people actually started respecting Deku because of how lucky he is, and he ended up getting a multitude of friends, leading to Deku's confidence and ability to talk to people actually skyrocketing. Deku has people to talk to, people who want to, you know, hang out with him, and that actually makes Deku happy, regardless of what the reason is for that. That being said, this is when I'm basically just going to be skipping over to the day of the sludge villain incident. Yeah, the sludge villain incident. Okay, so this is when Deku will basically go to school. Now, as I said before, it's the day of the sludge villain. Deku would basically walk in. However, when he does, he would basically tap on a bunch of people after he basically dabs them up. They would walk up to him and be like, hey, Deku, as Deku would basically just start getting dabbed up by a bunch of people. Deku would take a little bit of their luck from each one. And by the end of it, Deku would have an immense reservoir of extra luck by his side. Deku would then walk into class as the teacher would stop Deku right at the door and say, Hey, Deku, so uh, I actually was looking over your grades and all the other teachers and I decided that you were actually ahead of all your classmates by at least three years. So we decided that we were going to be giving you a test to actually pass the grade a little sooner. Seeing as we saw that you want to enter UA High, we actually want to help you so you can have more time to train. Deku would hear that and be like, What? Really? As he would act surprised as if, you know, he doesn't know that that was about to happen. Deku would then basically accept, and it's when Deku would basically proceed to pass the entirety of the exam. Deku would then be pretty hype as Deku would basically start going home. However, in this version of events, Deku would go home a little later, right? Now, of course, as you guys expect, Deku will of course be attacked, quote unquote, by the sludge villain. However, before the sludge villain even gets a chance to cover Deku up with its goo, all my burst straight from, from the sewer system and throws a Texas smash straight at that sludge villain. As it proceeds to get dispersed everywhere, Deku would then proceed to have a little bit of a grin on his face as All Might would just be like, I am here. And Deku would be like, All Might. As you know, Deku is lucky, but you know, he still hasn't met All Might. His idol himself is right in front of him. Deku would look at All Might as he would say, All Might, you're you're really here in the flesh. All Might would be like, yes, citizen. As he would be like, thank you for helping me catch this villain. Deku at this point would be like, is there any chance I can get your autograph? And All Might would be like, oh, sh sure thing. As it's at this point that All Might would give Deku his autograph and Deku would then start asking All Might some questions. Now, due to Deku still having a lot of luck left, All Might wouldn't even realize his time limitations and he would end up answering a bunch of Deku's questions. It's at this point that Deku would, would basically look down as immediately a puff of smoke would pop off of All Might as All Might immediately turns into a small Might form and Deku would just be like, what are you? As All Might is just like, kid, don't freak out. I promise it's me. But, you know, this and this and this and this happened. You know, he would explain what happened with One For All. And now we got the scar and, you know, why his time has been declining lately. Deku would just be like, dude, that scar is gnarly. As All Might would just be like, you're telling me? Half of my respiratory system is destroyed. Deku would look at him and be like, wow. I feel like there might be a way that I can help you. All Might would look at Deku and say, what do you mean? As Deku would then basically proceed to tell All Might to follow him. All Might would do so because, you know, he said he can help him. And All Might is not about to deny somebody who, you know, was trying to help All Might out. 
since the All Might never explained anything about how one for all can be passed on or the fact that there's a successor, Deku wouldn't have any idea of any of that stuff. Deku would then go around and touch a bunch of random people as he would bump into them ever so slightly, just enough for him to uh, make physical contact. A bunch of people would just be like, what's wrong with that kid? But you know, seeing as it is a 16 year old kid, I mean, what are they really going to do? Freak out at him? Actually, no, I'd say he's about 15 years old. So yeah, people regardless still wouldn't be saying anything to Deku. That being said, Said, after doing that, Deku would basically proceed to go up to All Might as he would pass on all the luck that he had just collected and give it straight to All Might. At this point, All Might would then reach into his phone as he would get a phone call from a new doctor. This is when they would basically report to All Might that there is a way that his respiratory system can be restored. However, it won't be the same one. After hearing that, All Might would just be like, wait, what do you mean it won't be the same one? As they would proceed to basically explain to All Might that, yeah, exactly what he just heard. It won't be the same one because technically what they're going to be doing is basically 3D printing a brand new respiratory system for All Might. See, they can't fix something that's that broken. Like you can't just grab a torn piece of paper and fix it up with glue or tape. You know, it's just not going to work out like that. So why not instead just make a perfect copy of it? And so that's literally what they do. And in the span of from day to night, they proceed to basically restore All Might is 100%. Not exactly his full prime 100% because... Because, well, you know, he can't go back. You know, the man All Might is, you know, he's, he's losing his he's losing his ears. You know, the man All Might's a little older. That being said, though, Deku would basically proceed to smile at All Might as he would say, oh, I gotta go. As it has been about three hours ever since he's been hanging out with All Might. All Might would just be like, wait, young man, can I get your number? And Deku would just say, I'll see you at UA as he would run off. Deku at this point would basically proceed to spend the next um, uh, the next couple of months just kind of chilling in his house. And in case some of you guys are wondering, where does Deku live? I know some of you guys are probably going to be like, what is Deku's, you know, financial situation? Because I'm pretty sure that's a question that some of you guys, not all of you guys, because I'm pretty sure many of you guys probably disregarded it. But some of you guys are probably thinking of that. Now, in terms of what a situation is like, Deku is a baller. This man, Deku, is bloated with money. He is rich, 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 rich. Because the man, I mean, he has luck. He did scratch off a 100 million lottery ticket. And um, it definitely ended up paying off. That being said, after that, Deku would basically just chill up in his mansion for the next couple of 10 months, and Deku would also work on a very specific ability, which you will all be finding out very shortly. That being said, this is when Deku would basically get his stuff ready, seeing as tomorrow is the day of the UA entrance exam. Deku would be getting all his stuff together, and Deku would then tell his mom to drop him off at, you know, UA, as she would of course proceed to grab the car and take Deku to school. Of course, Deku would arrive to the UA entrance exam, and this is when Deku Deku would basically walk past a bunch of kids as he would tap them on the shoulder and just kind of walk by in a sort of misdirection sense. He would tap them on the left shoulder but be walking on the right and this would cause them to look back as a bunch of people would just, some people would notice Deku was doing this and some wouldn't as a bunch of bad luck would just start raining down on some of the kids. This is when cars would start driving by and spill water on them. Some of them would fall, black cats would pass right under them, some of them would step on a crack and their mom's backs would break, you know, all this crazy stuff would start happening. Okay, I'm kidding about the mom one. That That's going too far. I, I'm not about to do that to the moms. But anyways, you know, of course, that's happening. And this is when Deku would... <laughs> I'm not about to do this to their moms. Anyways, um, yeah, forget I said that. Anyways, let's see. So, this is when Deku would basically walk inside. And man is Mr. Lucky. So, he's not going to be falling. And due to the fact that he does have way more confidence than a cannon. And he has a little bit of a cocky personality. I'm not going to lie now. Deku is completely just unfazed by the test. Deku would quite literally not even look at the questions and just circle whatever answer he feels like is right. And by the end of everything, Deku would pass easily, seeing as it's an exam. It's a little piece of paper, which he was able to do very quickly. So it's not like he really needed too much luck for that. That being said, this is when Deku would basically proceed to go outside to the robot portion as he would start making his way towards the front. Now, everybody, of course, would have been taken to the robot portion at the same exact time, and Deku would start walking towards the front. Ida, noticing this, would also see that Uraraka was towards that vicinity, and Ida would walk towards Deku as he would say, Hey, don't, you know, don't, don't distract that girl. 
Deku would immediately proceed to look at Ida as he's just like, huh? And Ida would just be like, yeah, don't distract that girl. I saw you were going over there to distract her. Deku would just basically chuckle under his breath and say, yeah, I won't do it. Don't worry about it. As Deku would then be like, I wasn't going to do that. I was just going to the front. Ida would just say, my apologies. And Deku would say, no, nah, no, nah, it's no worry, man. What's your name? Deku would stick his hand out for a handshake and Ida would immediately just grab his hand. Deku would then proceed to smirk as Ida would shake his hand and it's at this point that Deku would just smile as he would say have a lucky day as Deku would walk towards the front and immediately Ida would just fall onto the ground as somebody would run right past him. The gate would actually have ended up opening and people would end up trampling all over Ida as Ida the man gets pretty injured because of that and this actually leads to Ida just having a ton of awful luck during the time that he's taking the entrance exam meaning that in this version he barely passes like when I say barely I mean he was the last one to make it into class 1a so yeah that's how bad Ida did I was going to originally just have it so that where Ida just completely didn't even make it into UA but I'm just like eh and yeah that's basically what i'm thinking of that being said this is when deku would rush into the entrance exam as he would start destroying robots left and right deku would start obliterating robots with all the luck in the world deku would quite literally just stand in front of one and other robots would just come in and swing at deku to which deku would pretty much just duck Anyways, as I was saying, Deku would basically proceed to just kind of go through with this as Deku would kind of be a magnet for luck. Deku would start getting robot points in the most unorthodox ways ever heard. Deku would start getting points for the most ridiculous things ever and people spectating the entirety of the operation or what's going on would just be sitting there like what's happening as people would just be dumbstruck like I have no idea and Deku would just start destroying robots left and right. Robots would start destroying each other in front of Deku and Deku would ever so slightly use his weapons that he had because he's registered as quirkless. So Deku was able to use them, meaning that every shot that Deku takes immediately hits a robot on their point, which basically deactivates it. And Deku would start racking up all of the points that you can basically imagine. This would go on for about 10 minutes, and by the end of it, Deku would have scored a total of 567 points. An insane amount of robots, yes, I know. After this, Deku would basically just sit down as he's just like, whoo! I'm tired, as it's at this point that Deku would say I need a drink of water. However, right as this happens, a zero pointer would basically come out of the ground and a, and a little pipe of water would just break out. Deku would immediately see this and be like, oh perfect water, I've been needing this. As Deku would walk over towards the direction of the zero pointer, the zero pointer would start standing up as Deku would get a sip of water from the little fire hydrant, I believe that's what they're called, right? Yeah, fire hydrant. And uh, Deku would basically proceed to just kind of take a sip as many of you guys are probably like yo how is he taking a sip bro fire hydrants shoot water at a crazy amount of pressure and so that yes you are right however he's lucky so you know that really doesn't affect him that being said this is when deku would see the zero pointer fully in front of him as deku would just look at it and chuckle as he would say looks like i finally get the chance to show off Deku would immediately look at the zero pointer as he would proceed to do something very similar to what he had done in canon, where he would jump off and punch the zero pointer. Yeah, except in this version, Deku would proceed to coat his arms and legs in armament hockey, and he would jump up straight into the air, absolutely folding the robot, literally. Deku would punch it so hard that the robot would fold backwards. Similar to how a little lawn chair would fold when you kind of just try to uh, put it in its place, yeah, Deku would do just that to a gigantic robot, which is like, I have no idea how big the zero pointer is, but that thing is huge, so yeah, Deku destroys it, that being said, people would start getting extremely shocked, and people would look at Deku's direction, as Deku would basically say, well, uh, good luck guys, as Deku would run out of there, people would just stare at Deku, and people would start muttering, Uraraka, who was under the rubble at this point, would just be mouth agape, and Deku would just be smiling, as it's at this point 
that Deku would start grabbing his things as he's getting ready to go home. However, right as he started leaving, he would notice a certain somebody near him, as he would see a girl who would actually end up catching his attention. This girl would have black hair and in a ponytail. It would also be cut a little bit on the shorter side of things, I guess you could say, as, as long as, I, I don't know whether I would consider Momo's hair short or long, but I'm pretty sure it's a little bit on the longer side. That being said, Deku would look at Momo and immediately walk up to her as he's just like, hey, he would basically look at her as she would smile at him and say, oh, hello there. As Deku would look at her, he would then say, never seen you around this part. And Momo would immediately just be like, oh, yeah, I mean, I don't really come out that much. Deku would say, really? Huh, that's perfect. As or Momo would just be like, perfect? Deku would just be like, it's a joke, it's a joke. As Momo would start kind of weirdly chuckling. It'd be a little awkward at first. Deku would then look at her as he would say, he would basically make her smile, and Deku would look at her as he would basically proceed to say, Wow, you have a pretty cute smile. Momo would just be like, thanks, as Deku would be like, oh, you thanked me? And he, as he would just look at her and be like, uh, will you go out with me? As she would say, what? And Deku would just be like, will you go out with me before you realize how ugly I am? And she would just be like, <laughs> she would start laughing, you know? And Deku would look at her as he just chuckles to himself. Momo would look at him and say, you know what? Let's do it. As Deku would grab his stuff, he would then basically look at Momo as he goes to grab her by the hand. Momo would grab Deku and they would basically walk over towards an Italian restaurant that is near UA High School. They would go inside and it's at this point that Deku and Momo would start to have a conversation with each other. Basically just getting to know each other as well as, you know, they possibly could over the span of let's say 45 minutes because, you know, it does not take that long to get food from a restaurant. That being said, Deku and Momo would get to know each other pretty a solid amount and Momo would be told by Deku that he has a quirk which basically allows him to, uh, which he, which he basically has a quirk to, that allows him to manipulate luck as well as others luck and momo would just be like whoa that's an incredible ability if you were to use that power in just the proper way there could be an <coughs> a literal limitless amount of how much you can do with that power deku you know being like yeah i kind of realized that a little bit ago would just be looking at momo as the man literally gets stuck in momo's eyes momo would do the same towards deku and it's at this point that they would basically start uh, reaching towards each other as this one they would slowly inch closer and Deku would then proceed to hit the you know that little scrumptious little scrumptious scrumptious stuff you know that little holy uh you know stuff that's going down <clears throat> I don't know why I'm like censoring it they kissed they made out you know basically is what happened that being said this is when they would basically start getting to know each other a little bit and they would now be officially getting ready for their first day of school seeing as you know they had about three days to get ready seeing as they took the exam on Friday today counts as one day Saturday and Sunday and then Monday which is you know technically three days speaking but you know if you really want to say two then you can also say two that being said, they would text back and forth during that time, and this is when Deku would be throwing on his uniform as he's getting ready for his first day at UA High. That being said, this is when Bakugo would basically see Deku as he would see him walk into the class because you know Deku, you know he took him, he took a limo and he arrived there, same as Yahirozu because they both kind of ended up realizing that they're both. Uh, they both come from pretty big money families. However, Deku's family has a lot of bread because of his own, you know, hard work. I guess you could say. Not really, though, because, you know, it's kind of always given to him. Not in the good fashion, but, like, not in the fashion of, you know, everything's just given to him, period. But, like, I mean, what is he really about to do, you know? That being said, Deku would basically proceed to walk over towards Bakugo. So he'd be like, hey, Kachan. Bakugo would look at Deku as he would say, don't call me that, Deku. As he would say, I don't know how the hell you got in here. Being a quirkless person like you, why did they let you in here? Did, they must have felt sorry for you. As he would start talking down on Deku, Momo would walk over to Deku as she would say, what is he talking about? As Deku would say not to say anything, this is when Momo would not do a thing and Deku would just go back to sit in his seat. This is when Ida would go to Bakugo and say, what are you talking Talking about that boy over there destroyed an entire zero pointer all by himself in the matter of 10 seconds as Bakugo would say yeah I must have gotten pretty lucky from that as Deku would just look at Bakugo and say no I didn't get lucky dude I jumped as high as that robot's head was and I punched it off as Bakugo would just be like huh and to this point that Deku would basically start chuckling and say Bakugo 
I've had a quirk for the past couple of years, you know, but it's not like it's any of your business. As Bakugo would say, what did you just say to me, nerd? As he would start basically expl having explosions come off of his hand. Deku would immediately just repeat those same words as he would say, it's not like it's any of your business, Bakugo. Now get out of my face. As Ida would immediately get between the two and say, there will be no fighting in this classroom. As Zawa at this point, hearing the commotion, would wake up and be like, you guys couldn't be quiet for even five seconds, could you? As he would say, throw these on and meet me outside. Urok would be like, what about the orientation? And Aizawa would just be like, no, no, just straight up no. And they would all basically go get changed. And this is when Deku would proceed to ace each and every single little part that, you know, kind of comes with taking the quirk exam. Because, I mean, what are you going to expect? What are you expecting to do? Deku is a literal lucky god. The man always has things go his way. And that's basically how things are going to stay for the entirety of the story. That being said, Deku would get a great score. And it's at this point that they would now basically just kind of end the day. Deku, of course, got first place. He passed the 100 meter dash by coasting his by coating his legs with hockey. He destroyed the grip shrink with hockey. He used his luck to, you know, basically win at the other ones as well. And he would utterly destroy everybody. I mean, it was it was just not funny. He was on a completely different level from everybody else. Not to mention, he even gave Momo a little bit of luck and helped her pass. And some of the people who would have done better than in the original actually ended up doing a little bit worse because Deku completely stole one person person's luck that person being Mineta because we're getting rid of Mineta in this version of events because of a certain reason because if I don't get rid of Mineta Deku is going to die and, and you probably won't know what I mean but you'll find out later on that being said this is when you know they would basically start leaving and Bakugo would walk up to Deku as he would say hey Deku you better watch yourself. Lying to me for all these years, keeping all these secrets. I've been letting it slide, you know. I thought maybe you finally got over that little hero obsession of yours. But now, it looks like I'm going to have to put you back into your place. Deku would look at Bakugo as he would throw his backpack on and say, Talk to me when you actually get first place, you loser. As Deku would just start walking away with Momo. Bakugo would throw him an explosion at Deku. But Deku would dodge it, grab him by the hand, as immediately Bakugo's luck would go haywire. Bakugo would slip on a rock and fall straight on his face as he would proceed to eat shit basically. Bakugo would then be on the ground as he gets angry and Deku just walks away with Momo. As it's at this point that Bakugo gets so salty like this man is just angry. This man is a literal saltine cracker at this point like there is nothing you can do to save this man at all. That being said, this is when Deku would basically proceed to just go to school the very next day. As of course, the All Might stuff would happen. He busts into the classroom talking about some, I am here, walking in like a normal hero, as everybody notices him. And due to the fact that All Might actually doesn't have that injury, he can be present in all of the events, including the USJ. And that's going to be a lot, a big, big difference in terms of what ends up happening in this version. That being said, this is when we will now basically be kicking off the heroes with villains. Some of you guys are probably going to be like, yo, what's Deku's hero outfit? And in case you are wondering, Deku's outfit is going to be, let's see, he would have an Ambu costume because he watches Naruto and he really likes Naruto. So he decided, you know what? He's going to go with an Ambu theme. More specifically, a Naruto theme. And so that's basically what Deku does. He even has the Uchiha crest emblem embedded on it because he just likes the Uchihas. And Deku just basically proceeds to go and, uh, well, go inside of the building. As you know, obviously the teams are called. Everybody saw their costumes. Everybody else is basically as you would expect, seeing as, you know, nothing is really going to be changing in terms of costumes and all that stuff. That being said, the teams are going to be similar to the ones in canon. Okay, now you guys are probably going to be wondering, what are the teams going to be? Dude, Deku has luck, and who does he like in the classroom? Let, let me ask you guys that. Yep, he likes Momo. All right, who does he not like? He doesn't like Bakugo, and he doesn't like that one kid with the blue hair. Hmm, I wonder what the teams are going to be. Yeah, you guessed it. Deku and Momo versus Ida and Bakugo. They would immediately get called up, and Bakugo's eyes would just widen as he would get a giant grin on his face, and he would walk past Deku as he bumps his shoulder, and Deku would honestly just smile. It's at this point that Deku would have taken some of Bakugo's luck, seeing as he doesn't want to pull a fast one on Bakugo quite yet. This is when Deku would just look at Momo's direction and say, 
come on, let's go. I guess we gotta ace these kids, right? As Momo would just smile towards Deku's direction and say, huh, yeah, this is when Deku and Momo would basically grab each other as they would proceed to, well, essentially just go inside there. Deku would basically tell her to create something that can locate the bomb or like a little bit of an x-ray device which can kind of give them a sort of location towards it because not gonna lie Deku knows Deku can honestly just guess what floor and what room it's in but he wants Momo to feel useless I mean not useless but useful as Momo does that you know she creates a little thingy that basically is going to help them out Deku would be like is it there as Momo would say yeah it's there Deku would then tell her all right take the left side to get there because I have a feeling Bakugo's about to come this is when she would basically take that side and Bakugo would come in rushing from the right side saying, Deku! As he would rush towards Deku's direction. Immediately, Deku would do a backflip as he would then immediately kick one of Bakugo's gauntlets, shattering it completely. As Bakugo would then immediately just get angry at Deku and say, You've been fooling me for all these years, haven't you? Bet you've been laughing at my behind my back while you've been doing it too. As Deku would look at Bakugo, he would say, <laughs> I have Bakugo, how'd you know? Bakugo would look at Deku and just say, Ugh, as he would rush at Deku's direction. Deku would start manhandling Bakugo without using the Devil Fruit, without using hockey, nothing. Deku would just start bodying this man Bakugo completely, just giving him zero seconds to breathe or respond. And Bakugo would just get overwhelmed so bad that at one point, Deku would let Bakugo land a hit for a certain reason. See, during that hit, Deku would have caught it with his, with his, you know, his shoulder. And after that hit landed, Deku kicked Bakugo away as he took all of Bakugo's luck. Well, almost all of it. Just enough to not, let's say, put Bakugo on a t-shirt. Bakugo would get flung away as his gauntlet that, uh, that's on his wrist would be fully filled up. However, it would malfunction and explode right on his wrist. As it would send him crashing into the wall, ricocheting everywhere... He would proceed to basically just start just start bouncing out around and just get knocked out. Momo would find the bomb room and Deku would rush over to Momo's location as he's just like, great, you made it. He would look at Momo as he would say, look, uh, we're needed. We're going to throw smoke bombs in there because Ida, well, you know, he may be fast, but what he can't see, he can't protect. And this one Momo would say that that's a great idea. She would put on the smoke goggles and she would throw the smoke bomb in there. She would go in there and grab the bomb and that would lead to Deku's team pretty much being the winner. That being said, this is when we will now basically be jumping into a little bit of a mini time skip. See, of course, they're going to be having a little bit of a week where they pretty much won't do anything. And then after that, we're going to be jumping into the USJ. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can even tell, but recently in this store, in this, uh, in this what if, I've basically been having a lot of pauses. Now, the reason for that is because your boy, you know, obviously has some, uh, some IRL stuff that he has to do. So every now and then I basically have to record parts of the movie and then stop and then record. So if my tone of voice, or let's say I speak louder or softer at some points in the video, that is basically why. That being said though, guys, this is where we're going to basically pick everything off right where I had basically left off. Okay, so the USJ stuff, right? Deku would basically just kind of go through with a normal week and he would spend most of that time with Momo. Of course, this man and Momo would basically get down and start doing some good old fashioned studying. See, because Momo and Deku, you know, they may be, you know, you know, they're they're at the age where, you know, they're trying to they're trying to do a little some sum and Deku and Momo, they start studying, you know, they start start hitting biology, you know, they start doing multiplication, adding adding each other, you know, subtracting the stuff, you know, all this good stuff, right? All this unholy Christian of uh, you know, things that they're doing, right? That being said though, Deku would basically, you know, have a pretty good, you know, chill time with Momo. Of course they'd go on normal dates, you know, they'd be doing normal couple stuff because that's pretty much what they are at this point. Deku would have already asked Momo out on a date, and from that day he basically ended up asking her out. She said yes because I mean, why would she say no? And you know, Deku does have all the luck in the world, so there's no way she was gonna say no to him. That being said though, Deku would basically look at Momo as it's at this point that Deku and Momo just kind of go through with a normal week, as I already said, and this is when we're basically just going to skip over to the day where they are on the bus. Now, everybody would basically be on the bus, just like in canon, Suyu would basically be talking about some, oh yeah, guys, like, who the fuck do you guys... 
okay, I probably can't talk like that. That might mess up my video now, but uh, hopefully it doesn't, because if it does, I will cry. That being said, though, you know, Suyu would be like, who do you guys think is the strongest in the classroom? And everybody would just start debating whether it's going to be Deku, whether it's, you know, Todoroki. Because in terms of Bakugo, they saw that man get folded hard, so nobody even mentioned him. And after seeing that, Bakugo got pretty butthurt. I mean, like, nobody mentioned him. Uh, yeah, Bakugo's definitely not used to that. That being said, they would of course basically arrive to the USJ. This is when Aizawa would tell them all to get into a straight file line, and Ida would basically tell them all to do the same. They would go outside, to which 13 would start giving her lame speech, and all the kids would basically just be sitting there like, bro, we get it, bro. Like, our quirks can be dangerous, but they're not, so it's like, chill. And 13 is just rambling, talking about some, yeah, guys, you know, your quirks can be very dangerous, this, this, and that, you know, yada, yada, yada. You, you get the point. Anyways, though, she does that, and this is when the kids would basically just start being like, bro, I swear, if you don't if you, you don't shut up right now, I we are going to physically get violent with you. 13 would be on some okay stuff, you know, and she would basically finally, finally, finally start the lesson. As, of course, basically everybody just gets told what to do. They would all be pretty much getting into formation as it's at this point that a purple mist would arrive in front of them. Of course, this is going to be Kurogiri, and this is when basically everybody would see a purple mist arrive. As soon as that happens, Deku would jump over to it and try to grab him. However, when he does that, Kurogiri ends up teleporting Deku to the water area as Deku would land right into the water. And it's at this point that Deku would immediately start sinking. He cannot swim at all. Deku's luck was not enough to save him. Deku would start sinking to the bottom as this is when Deku would start thinking, is this the end? Deku would then start saying, my only, this is the only thing that can get me down. A villain would start to approach Deku. However, this is when suddenly Suyu would come in and kick the villain away as she's like, ribbit. And she would grab Deku as she saves him and takes him onto the boat. She's like, what happened Midoriya? Like, can you not swim? And Deku would kind of just stay silent. As Suyu would realize, that's his that's his downfall. He can't swim. All this luck, but if he goes into water, he's done for. Suyu would have a little bit of a smile on her face. And she's like, looks like you do have a little bit of a weakness, don't you, lucky boy? As Deku was just like, I mean, a little bit. He'd basically look at her and be like, please don't tell anybody about this. Because if anybody knows, they'll probably try to exploit it. He'd say, I mean, if you do it, it's understandable. Because now you know, but like, just, you know, keep it on the down low. So you'd be like, yeah, 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 sure, I got you. Like, what am I about to do? Tell everybody that what's that going to get me? Nothing. Deku would be like, yeah, true. And it's at this point that Suyu would just look at Deku as she's like, all right, well, how are we going to take these guys down, Midoriya? As Deku would basically just be sitting there. He's like, huh, let me let me grab onto you, Suyu. So you'd be like, no, you're about to take my luck. And Deku would say, trust me. Deku at this point would basically take all of Suyu's luck and this is when the boat would completely explode. However, Deku would give him give her all of his luck, well almost all of it, and she would grab him as she jumps all the way over to land and they would land perfectly safely. As it's at this point that Deku would see Azawa fighting a bunch of villains, Deku would tell Suyu to get out of there as he would immediately rush towards the multitude of villains. He would start tapping them on the backs and this is when Deku would just start getting just a pure evil like little smirky grin on his face you know Deku after doing this would then say <laughs> looks like all of you were done for as the villains would turn towards you turn towards Deku's direction this is when one of them would basically rush at Deku however he would fall and hit one of the other villains and the villains would basically start turning on each other as they would all start fighting each other Aizawa would just be standing there like what did you just do and Deku's like I use my quirk as Aizawa basically just tries to nullify Deku's quirk he would realize that he can't do a thing. And Aizawa will then basically start pondering on that. However, this is when Shigaraki would say, That damn brat, Nomu, kill him. As the Nomu would rush at Deku's direction, Deku would immediately see the Nomu coming and dodge out of the way. As Deku does a flip backwards, and the Nomu then throws a kick at Deku's direction. As Aizawa would cancel its quirk, immediately Deku would get kicked. However, Deku would get kicked into literal... Like, like a literal pillow a literal pillow would catch him as Deku just smiles and Deku would then basically point up as immediately a literal plane would just land straight crashing into the Nomu as Deku just starts smiling the Nomu the Nomu's done for bro 
and uh, as I already said, All Might, he is healed. So during this time, All Might wasn't really focusing on the main villains. What All Might was focusing on was helping his students out. So people like Momo, people like Hiroshima and Bakugo, Todoroki and, you know, little naval laser boy. He was basically out there helping them, seeing as Aizawa had like the middle and like the main guy handled, seeing as All Might believed in him. And yeah, that's basically what was going down. All Might would land in front of Deku as he's like, wow. You seem to be a very formidable fighter. You know, he would use that All Might voice and Deku would just be like, yeah, I mean, it was really nothing. As All Might would be like, it's very much something. Now, this is when Deku would basically just start chuckling and be like, yeah, I guess. And it's at this point that they will now have a one week break. During this time, they would use that time to basically fix the USJ because, well, a literal plane crashed into it and it hit the Nomu, which basically destroyed it. It just turned it to dust because the Nomu went up in flames pretty much and an explosion, which was on that type of magnitude. Yeah, the Nomu was done for. A couple of villains also got hit by the, uh, the area effect damage and a lot of them are actually in critical condition. As for Shigaraki, you guys are probably like, yo, what happened to him? Now, Shigaraki had the literal half of his face just burned so that thing is looking like that that thing is looking like freddy krueger the half of his face is looking like that deku would have seen that and immediately just been like oh that is not good as you know uh kurogiri would basically grab uh shigaraki and teleport him out of there that being said this is when they would basically announce the ua school festival but one thing that is actually going to shock all of you is that deku would quite literally not be allowed to take part in it see at this point everybody in class 1a basically now knows that deku has the ability to manipulate luck or more specifically probability manipulation meaning that he can you know give himself the best outcome and all that stuff and basically warp reality in a sort of sense because when you have that much luck you kind of have to warp reality a bit there's no no way that you can actually be that lucky so it kind of has a little something to do with warping reality that being said though guys this is when Deku would basically start uh you know just going up as president mike would actually tell deku that if he wants he can actually go up there with him and give out the you know he could basically be one of the people in the in the in the mics you know basically just talking and telling everybody you know getting the crowd lit is basically what deku's job is that being said deku would actually be doing a pretty great job at that and deku would actually be told it would be announced that deku would have actually won that had he taken part in it because well i mean the man is op that being said though boys, this is when we will now basically have one crazy event happen. You remember how I told you that Deku has a lot of luck? Yeah, all that luck, it's gonna cultivate now. Deku, before he even went up to the announcers, basically would have dabbed up a bunch of the people in the stands. He would have basically dabbed them all up. And all that luck would basically amount to a giant cluster F of villains just showing up to the USJ, uh, to UA Sports Festival. See, a bunch of villains would just show up and they'd be like, oh yes, this is about that time. Deku would be like, oh, this is perfect. As Overhaul, Redestro, one all for one would basically all pull up and we got a healthy all might and deku with all this luck in the world deku would run around and give all the hero students as much luck as he possibly can and he would start taking a lot of it from the civilians he would pass it on to all the pro heroes and the pros would slap the villains i am not kidding like you know when deku gets lucky and they miss their attacks and like things like that happen yeah that's happening for all of them and everybody would just be murdering the villains like they would be going crazy the villains stand zero chance at all and all for one he was defeated by all might with just one mighty uh united states of smash blow which actually had all might charge up all of his percentage one for all that he had left that being said he actually ended up basically giving it to deku because well you know after that deck uh all might's body just could not handle the stress of one for all any longer his body was getting old and it needed to give the power to someone else however because deku doesn't have a quirk he is actually the perfect candidate he would accept one for all by taking one of all my strands and due to his luck it would go straight into his system deku would proceed to start bodying everybody read destro every single villain you guys can think of off um overhaul yeah all of them get bodied and um this is basically where we're going to be ending off this story deku pretty much ggs all the big villains and main threats on the first part because i mean like 
dude deku is so lucky if i really wanted to he probably could have just like flipped the coin and every villain in the world would have probably just been like boop like just gone gone from existence but you know i wasn't trying to do all that you know so instead i opted for this because not gonna lie boys i'm literally on the biggest time restraint however in case you were you did want like the story to go a little longer it was basically going to go something like this deku went into the ua sports festival however he couldn't do it they basically did the forest uh this internships which basically dealt with stain and all that stuff however deku would have not gone there deku would have gone somewhere else and done a lot of great stuff then afterwards they did the basically the race he won and after that they were going to do the force training arc where all from was going to pull up and deku was just about to body that man like completely solo him and uh offer i mean overhaul yeah he's pretty much nobody at that point so yeah that's basically where what if deku ate the luck luck fruit is going to be ending now in case my audio did get a little bit low towards the end i do apologize because i am low-key recording at night therefore most of my family is sleeping and like right now i literally just got a text from my dad being like yo dude pass out or you know you're grounded so it's like i kind of have to pass out now that being said though boys i hope you guys did enjoy the video seeing as you know your boy put a little bit of work into it you know i made this crispy thumbnail for you guys i did all this you know work for y'all you know school's coming out and i'm still dropping these banger movies so if i would really appreciate it if you guys left a like subscribe hit that post notification and left a comment down below letting me know what you think that being said i love each and every single one of you guys it has been your boy zether and i am out peace